at filling stations often shows the scarcity of kerosene as bark, a frequent occurrence for Nigerians. 90% of the more than 150 million population of Nigeria rely on kerosene as their main source of energy for cooking, but because its availability is unreliable and expensive, 60% of the country's population are said to tend to other cooking alternatives like firewood and charcoal. Officially, a liter of kerosene is sold at 50 naira, but could be as high as 200 naira during scarcity. While three small pieces of firewood cost 20 naira, and a kilogram of charcoal goes for 50 naira, though the prices increase during kerosene scarcity. In the high brow area of Lagos, Amina Isiaka, a food vendor, cooks with either charcoal or firewood. Amina says charcoal is more expensive, but she prefers it to wood because it cooks faster and doesn't give off smoke. Asked if she would use other alternative source of energy like cooking gas, she said no because she has been accustomed to the traditional method of cooking with charcoal and firewood. The felling of trees to produce charcoal is a booming business in Nigeria. The high demand of these products has led to deforestation. Between 1990 and 2010, Nigeria lost over 47% of its forest cover, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Professor Babajide Alo says the process of burning wood and turning it to charcoal generates sufficient ozone layer depleting gas. Out of poverty and poverty crisis, people tend to rely on charcoal for providing domestic energy. The charcoal is not coming from anything else but from trees that are, that are caught. Because you cannot get charcoal without burning the tree that you cut. So all of this is a vicious circle. As you can see, we cut the tree to turn into charcoal. The process of turning into charcoal will generate the emissions. Whereas that tree, we needed it to even you know, absorb the emissions so that we don't have global warming. But the net overall effect of all this is that we've, we harm ourselves. We generate sufficient uh, uh, gases which deplete the ozone layer. Nigeria has a national forestry policy and the national document on biodiversity conservation action plan. Some states of the Federation have criminalized indiscriminate felling of trees. The country is also a signatory to the global commitment to checkmate carbon emissions, but environmental experts say the trend would continue unless an aggressive campaign is embarked upon and a sustainable alternative source of energy is provided for the poor. Awareness creation is uh, not enough in the first place. People believe that forests are government properties. It's a no man's property. And so the, the communities, the populace, are not sensitized to know that it is a common you know, good. It's a common service. It is something that belongs to all of us. It is a mother earth. And it is what we must manage together and so when something belongs to nobody then nobody takes care of it and also i want to believe that um, the policy makers uh, might not be you know too forthcoming on independence our forest surface is about 30 percent and now it is 3%. 
that kerosene is not available, gas is not available, even to the urban lady, how much more urban lady. The government should pay more attention to it. To make, uh, to make them, there's no alternative. I know that. But to give them a cheaper alternative. I mean, I use gas, but I know how expensive it is. The situation is not different in Malawi. Deforestation is a major problem in Malawi. Between 1990 and 2005, the country lost 13% of its total forest cover and 35% of its primary forest covers. Official statistics from the Malawi government post the rate of deforestation as 2.8% every year. The main causes, according to the country's district forestry officer, are firewood collection and charcoal production. She also added that a loss of forest cover has led to other environmental problems like soil erosion, floods and threatening the food security in Malawi. The business of charcoal and firewood is the only source of income for many Malawians. Since 1966, charcoal production has been illegal and reinforced in the 1990s. A report by the International Institute for Environmental Development concluded that regulating the charcoal industry in Malawi would encourage sustainable investment in the use of forested areas and bring in tax revenues for the government of over $41 million annually. Burning wood is one of the best ways of enabling poor people in poor countries to get energy into their houses. It's much less dirty than burning coal and burning oil, but unlike coal and unlike oil, you can replace the, the carbon in the charcoal that you burn by planting trees. And so it's very easy to set up a system where you manage tree production, charcoal production in a sustainable way. And we've been working with partners in Malawi where the government there has banned charcoal production. But in fact, if they legalized it and taxed it, they would generate a huge amount of money that would enable them to build new hospitals, build new schools, and also create sustainable jobs for people. And this is something that's really important for development. Included in this would be a, they would be able to increase the overall forest cover, but manage it in a way that's really sustainable. So taking out some. Back in Nigeria, the country is ranked seventh with the largest gas reserves in the world, but only less than 10% of her population uses liquefied petroleum gas. Afam Godfrey, a roadside LPG trader, complained about poor patronage. The 3 kg cylinder, which is the smallest, sells for 5,500 naira and to refill with gas is 800 naira. Price varies from one location to the other. As an effort to reduce emissions in Nigeria, the country has registered several carbon credit projects, but some are big projects the common person cannot access directly. This set of stove is said to be highly efficient and reducing the amount of wood consumed by 80%. Before the stove was registered, it cost about 40,000 naira, but now sells at 15,000 naira. The price difference is what the carbon credit achieves. It addresses the um, climate change in general. Um, it addresses desertification, um, so it reduces the amount of wood used. But for you, as a, if you buy one, you're going to save real money with your cooking at home. 
instead of spending thousands of naira for kerosene, you're going to spend a few hundred. So it has a real impact on your bottom line. The project is uh, sponsored by the UN for 10 years. That means each stove is guaranteed for 10 years. Mm -hmm. If something goes wrong, we replace it. Every stove carries a serial number. And the UN once a year sends auditors that come and take a, um, take a sample, of course, um, of stoves that have been sold, and they will want to go and track them. So they want to make sure we don't just sell them to people that don't use them. The stove set can cook anything for as long as 14 hours. For rice, which is a staple food in Nigeria, it takes about 14 minutes to cook on regular stove. But it takes just 10 minutes to boil on the energy saving stove and then 13 minutes to finish cooking without heat. There's absolutely no danger of anybody hurting themselves. So this really is now, in a way, this is completely fuel-free cooking now. We, we took the rice after, as soon as the water boiled, we placed it in this box. There's no more fuel, there's no more heat, so uh, there's also no more, no more risk to people burning themselves. At 15,000 Naira, the price is still beyond the reach of those who really need the stove. Mr. Solomon says each stove could cost 14,000 Naira if the Nigerian Customs Service tariff were 5% of the price they pay to the manufacturer instead of the 20% they charge. The other big challenge we have is with Lagos Customs. Tell us about it. Well, we, um, it, it is a UN-sponsored project. It is approved by the Nigerian Ministry of, um, of the Environment and yet it still has to be, um, it's, we still have to pay customs duty and currently it takes about eight weeks to clear the containers out of customs, which is a very long process. If, um, if the customs duty were reduced, um, which is actually quite common in other countries for similar projects, we would pass that on directly to the, to the customer. As the world clamor for nations to lower greenhouse gas emissions, climate watchers hope that both Nigeria and Malawi will improve upon their existing mechanisms to cut down carbon emissions.